Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah, ooh, ooh, yeah, time. Anyway, hey, everybody. We're ready for another round of uh, No Stupid Questions. Woo, yeah, yeah, woo, yeah, time, yeah. Hello, and welcome to another No Stupid Questions, uh, where we answer the questions that no one else has the guts, or the gumption, or another really funny word that starts with G to answer. Uh, there wasn't an episode last week because uh, me and Alex can only record within, like, a 30-hour window, and if either of us are just gone during that, we're fucked. So, we're fucking grown-ass boomers now, dude. We're too busy working 40-hour work shifts. That's true. Uh, also, um, uh, it won't be in this episode, but I think in the next one, I have a, uh, a fun a fun intro thing that we might put on here. But uh, anyway, so we answer the stupid, small, inconsequential questions that people have throughout the day. So um, I'm going to start off, uh, we're, I guess we're just going to go ahead and go right into it, Alex. Uh, I'm going to start off with this one that I think you probably were also going to use. Oh, fuck you. It's the fucking pinned comment, yes. This is from Kaylin Vitelli. How do I submit a question for the show? Fuck you, okay. I didn't take that one because I thought it was too stupid. <laughs> <laughs> there are new stupid questions, except for yours, dumbass. <laughs> Uh, let me tell you about t t t at gmail.com. That's let me tell you about with three T's at gmail.com. Uh, I was accepting questions through other means, but it's too hard to keep track of. So send them to the email because I have like a specific folder for them and I'm like all organized and shit. See, it's funny you say that and you're being all professional, but I don't have access to that email. So I just ripped them off the YouTube uh, comment section of the previous video. We have fun here, don't we, Alex? Ha ha. Anyway, so. I got a question here, and uh, I actually got this when I was at work. You know, when I was supposed to be working at my job, and I wasn't, I was just looking at my email. Nice. This one is from Ernesto Gomez. His question is, uh, where are all the dead urban birds? Now, I don't live in, like, a really big urban area. I don't live in the suburbs either, because I'm not, I'm white, but I'm not, like, that kind of white, you know? I'm between white trash and, like, suburb white. But I don't live in a real big city. And is Boise, like, a big city? Well... I know it's, like, the, it's like the, the capital of the state or whatever. It is the capital of uh, Idaho. But it's it's not Chicago, Dad. Like, the downtown of Idaho looks like just, like... There's, like... Okay, so you know in Chicago there's, like, 20 billion skyscrapers everywhere? Yeah. In Boise, there's like a skyscraper. Okay. Like the the downtown doesn't look like much of a city. Like it looks like a city, but less. You, you know how hardcore <laughs> history was like the Japanese are like us, only more. Boise's a lot like Chicago, only less. It's trying its hardest to be a city. We're like we have like this new like plaza thing. We have these statues here. We have like this new building. They're trying desperately to look cool, but it's Boise, so everything's way smaller and more like rustic. I guess is the polite way to, and to say potato it. And potato shaped. And potato shaped. So it's like it's a lot more laid back. But like out here and just like this part of Boise, like legitimately, it's just like this looks like just like right there, fucking town. It's literally the only part that looks like a city is specifically the one like square of downtown. So, but I do know that I do know the answer to his question anyway. What happens to all the birds? This also happens to say like uh, animals that get run over by cars. Uh, you know those guys who drive down streets with big sweepers? Yeah, they pick up the dead dead animals too. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I they guess just, I guess it kind of makes sense. Yeah, what do you think? They just disappear? Like, the animals just eat them, like, that fast? No, fucking the garbage guy comes down, like, just like how whoever comes to fix the sewers is, like, the the big the cleaner guys. I just have, like, I, I think it's, it's either the garbage men or it's specifically, like, the fucking, like, animal guys. I don't remember which one does it, but they the, the city itself sends people out to go clean up all the dead fucking animals. Okay. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean... Do you do you see a lot of the the only place I see pigeons and those kind of birds all over is like a strip mall over by Walmart and that's it. Do you ever see like pigeons shitting around everywhere? 
So there's no pigeons out here, but we have a bunch of crows that live at my Walmart. They always fly around getting food off the thing. I actually don't clean up some of the food just to, like, give them something to eat, because I know they probably aren't that good at finding food on their own, otherwise they wouldn't be at my Walmart. Plus, I like crows. <laughs> Plus, I like them. I like having the crows around. There's a couple of ducks that fly by sometimes, and there's a couple of these weird, uh, these weird birds with, like, a white shoulder. I forget what they're called. But they're, and also the peacocks. And the peacocks over the wall, of course, who who have, uh, as I've shown uh, pictures in the fucking uh, podcast discord, those little fuckers have been annoying lately. You saw them on top of the fucking fence, or there's <laughs> that one that was eating garbage in my fucking lot. I didn't like shoot away. They're pushing their fucking boundaries. Yeah. So I have a lot of birds at my Walmart, just uh, no pigeons. It's all like the, all literally everything but a pigeon, apparently. Like a zoo of birds. So there's a shitload of... And you're going to laugh at this. Feral pigeons in large is, cities. Okay, what the fuck is the difference between a pigeon and a feral fucking pigeon, Tad? They're, they're wild animals. They can't be feral. They're already feral. No, not necessarily. You can have my cousin Jake. He had pet pigeons. That oh, guy okay. from, uh, from um, fucking Hey Arnold. I almost said Hey Aladdin. Hey Arnold. Pigeon man. You can have okay. pigeons as pets. Pigeons are were used by the government for, uh, for in like in like World War One and Two to send messages and shit. But I can't imagine a pigeon's that much different from like whether it's wild or tame. It's a bird. It's not like a pig who legitimately goes through an alter like altercation or whatever. Legitimately alters its form to look more like a warthog. It evolves like a Pokemon. Literally, just fucking morphs. But here's the thing. So there's um. Well, the difference between a feral and a wild pigeon is that a, or a pet pigeon is that a pet is going to have its shots. But anyway, so there's like between one to seven million pigeons in New York City, which that's like a pretty fucking huge like that's a lot of wiggle room. One to seven million. But pigeons are basically at the bottom of the food chain. They're the worms in the dirt of the Mr. Popo pecking order. Or it's you, the dirt, worms in the dirt, popo stool, commie, then popo. They're the worms <laughs> in the dirt. So they're a little bit above you and me. Pigeons live like three, they live like four and a half years on average. They don't live like super long. But if they weren't, if they aren't eaten by like a million things, like everything that eats them, they can live up to be like 15. Like my cousin Jake, his pigeons are pretty old because he's had them since he was in like middle school, I think. Here's a short list of all things that eat pigeon. Red tailed hawks, Cooper hawks, peregrine falcons, which are those birds that can fly at over 200 miles an hour. Owls, cats. Domesticated cats, stray cats, rats, raccoons, foxes, possums, dogs, heavy snow, cold, too hot, <laughs> disease, ticks, and humans. Everything think, eats pigeons. I don't think hot eats a pigeon, Tad. I don't know. I saw a picture of a pigeon that just melted in an air duct, Alex. I didn't want to see it. It was just in the article. But, like... Okay, 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 but how many fucking, like, green falcons are in fucking Chicago, Dad? Um, there's actually a shitload of red-tailed hawks in, um, Chicago area. They won't be, like, downtown. Like, anything that can fly is gonna kill a pigeon, because what the fuck is a pigeon gonna do? They exist to be eaten. Um, but if you're closer in town, usually what'll happen is that pigeons will get either preyed on by something uh <laughs> i saw a video of a dog that like walks over like sniffs at a bird and licks him and just eats the pigeon <laughs> <laughs> um oh also humans used to eat pigeons uh we ate so many pigeons we knocked an entire species out of existence in like 60 years nice uh they were called passenger pigeons there was in like the 1700s 1800s uh they're like pretty fucking they were like a foot and a half long and uh, they were really, really cheap meat. They were like sky buffalo, where they're really easy to kill and they have a lot of meat on them. Really easy to kill. So we just fucking ate them all. We endangered the fuck out of buffalo. That was only like a few fucking thousand left. Yeah. So if a pigeon isn't brutally eaten on a sidewalk, like that video of a falc I, I, all of these articles that I read would just have like a turtle ripping apart a pigeon in the middle of the article. It's like, I didn't need to see this. 
You don't have to show me graphically a fucking snapping turtle ripping one's head off. Thank well, you, BBC. You have, you have proof that it happens, though. They can just say whatever. Yeah, I definitely they're... needed proof that pigeons get killed. Jeez, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so, what? So if a pigeon gets like old or sick, or if they're just feeling pretty shitty, what they'll do is they'll fly up and they'll hide in really small, tight spaces. I saw some like I don't know, I'm not a bird scientist. Uh, despite playing one in Revival of Dungeons & Dragons Real Play podcast. But, uh, like, ancient pigeons or something used to live in, like, these, like, caves and shit. So they usually hide up in, like, abandoned warehouses or attics or ventilation shafts if they're feeling sick and bad and then just kind of die. Because they're not going to be, like, if you're feeling like death, you're not going to be flying around in the middle of New York City and then just die in midair and fall down <laughs> on top of the car. You're going to go sit somewhere. <laughs> I'm just picturing you just walking down the street and just <laughs> clap and be like, well, guess that one wasn't feeling too good. <laughs> He's just flying, looks at his watch. Oh, guess it's time to die. Nose dives immediately and takes out a child's ice cream cone. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking fuck living downtown, dude. So uh, the other thing that I that I was pretty interested in when I was looking this up was how the fuck do homing pigeons work? So homing pigeons, uh, how you make a homing pigeon work is you establish its home. So it's if this is for like military uses, its home is in spot X. This is where the pigeon was born. This is where they were raised. You know, this is where they get food and all that. They they've established this as their home. So what you do is you give these pigeons to people on the front lines so that, and of course, as you know, this is before we could telegraph and call and all that shit, but you would have the pigeons with you on the front lines. You get some info like, oh, the, 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 we saw scouts over here. They're going to attack from this angle. You give the pigeon the note, you just let it loose and then the pigeon flies back home. And the reason why a pigeon's able to fly back home is that they can hear at, um, it's like point to one Hertz. So at that volume, everything gives off a distinct kind of sound. So what pigeons will do is they'll memorize what their home sound is like, and they're able to hear off of such far away distances that they can kind of make their way back. So that's how they, uh, that's how, that's how uh, homing pigeons work. They use their like acoustic mental map to find their home, which I thought was they, pretty cool. But they can't avoid a dog just licking them and then eating them. No, cause they're fucking stupid. Oh, okay. So that's what happens with pigeons. They either get cleaned up by Joe Schmo, or they just get violently killed, or they die in your school's air duct and then turn to powder and get shot all over the children. <laughs> that was another fucking thing I saw in an article. It was a bunch of dead pigeons that turned into dust. They got shot over kids. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> okay. All right. So that was actually a really interesting question that took like an entire section of time. So my question is a little less interesting. This one's from Aaron S., Aaron asks, if the gas station is five miles away and the average man can walk 3.1 miles per hour, then why is it taking my dad 15 years to come back from the gas station? <laughs> Same, dude. Except, you know, I would phrase this question as the length it takes to go down the Mississippi River to Florida to get away from myself and my mom is this amount of distance. And traveling on his shitty yacht, my dad could go, why speed? Why hasn't? Why haven't I heard from him? The last time I heard from my dad, I was in high school and I got a letter from Florida State Prison. Based. <laughs> Reminds me of when my mom was uh, showing me my dad's mugshot and said to never talk to him again because he's going to hurt you. <laughs> Did I mention I had a really messed up life? I'm sorry, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> did, I, did I mention I have a dysfunctional family yet? Anyway. So Alex, why why doesn't it take his dad so long to get back? Because there's a really long line. The shitter. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta get the keys and everything. No, okay, so I actually know I know the answer to this question, actually. Like, legit. So, you, you are right, listen to this, this is really funny, fuck you. <laughs> you, you ever <laughs> you ever listen to the dollop? Yes. Yeah, the, the, so, there's a one episode I'm talking about Native Americans and uh, they're talking about racism in the old fucking day 
where there was a uh, white uh, bathroom yes. and a black bathroom. <laughs> Racism in the old days, back when it existed. <laughs> and we could, it was a different brand of racism, and you know it, dumbass. The point is, it was more socially acceptable to be racist. Like, there was a white bathroom and a black bathroom, and the Native American kid asked his dad, Dad, what do I do? So your dad is at the gas station, still pondering what to do right now as an adult. He's still looking at the... Because he's one of those old gas stations. He's looking at the white door, looking at the black door. Hmm. 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 And like his beard's just growing as he's just there stroking his beard, thinking and thinking and thinking and... He'll just be there till the end of time, holding it in for years. <laughs> That's why your dad's not, not around anymore, Aaron. Yeah, I'm sorry we had to break it to you. So I got another question here. This one's from Jeff McGee. And I actually asked my boss about this one. So that's my source for this one. My boss gave me this. His question is, do prescriptions get stronger or weaker when they expire? What about actual <laughs> ass poison? That's a good question. The FDA, this is for the U.S. I don't know if it's any different in the European countries. I didn't, like, I'll admit it. I didn't put forth the effort to see what the European ones were because I didn't think about it at the time. So the FDA in the U.S. requires drug manufacturers to have a guaranteed effectiveness time span. If I pick up a bottle of Tramadol and it says it expires on December 2020, that means that people who made it can guarantee with 100% accuracy that this drug will do its intended function until that date. After that date was the first time they ever had any variance in their results, even if it was off by 0.0001%. So what this means is that most medicines will work for like a long time. And the, this study that they actually did, so the U.S. government... The, the military had a shitload, a shitload of medicines that were about to expire. They're like, well, we don't want to fucking toss these. Can we still use it? And so uh, they commissioned the, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how it works. I'm not a government scientist. Uh, they, I guess, commissioned the FDA to investigate it. And the FDA found that most prescriptions you can use for, like, years afterwards. And it'll still be pretty damn good. Um, if it's a medicine that you like, if it's your insulin, you don't want to really risk that because that'll fuck you up. But if it's pretty much anything else, you'll be Gucci. And of course, like a doctor and a pharmacist will never, they can't guarantee that it'll work. So, you know, you'll never get the okay from them to do it. So like if you're in the apocalypse and you're not trained in your medicine skill, there is a higher chance that you'll get killed if you take expired meds, but you'll usually be pretty Gucci. Uh, as for poison. I mean, what's the difference? Am I right, fellas? Oh, dude, political commentary. But yeah, so they, uh, the, they, they won't like turn to poison except for Tylenol. Tylenol will fucking destroy your liver if you take it and it's expired. Same with liquid medicine. Don't do that. I, You'll fucking yeah, die. I, I, was, I was going to assume most liquid shit would probably still be bad if it expired. It'd probably be all gunky and shit. Yeah, it's because of the acetaminophen and Tylenol. If that is expired, there's a higher chance it's going to fuck your liver up. How many so, times did it take you to learn how to pronounce that word? Not acetaminophen? My dude. It's easy. The words like hydrochlorothiazide and like all this other shit. That's, that's just easy, bro. You just got to learn how to speak. <laughs> My brain hurty. <laughs> all right. Uh, so. Yeah. So that's 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 with uh, medicines there. So, yeah, you can totally. But like, you know, if the pill looks all fucked up, you probably don't want to take it because it got wet or something. But you won't die. So there's my answer, Jeff. So just start fucking pounding down those six-year-old Tylenols. All right, so. (sighs) Got a little yawn there. All right, so Lemon Sponge actually has a really interesting question. What was the name? He asked Lemon Sponge. Hmm. What's the hmm for? What, you don't like that name? Hmm. What's wrong? It's just a lemon sponge. Mm. Unless, unless that's some kind of reference that well, I don't understand. Here, let's, let's not judge him until I hear his question. Okay, okay, fine, fine. So his question is, why are ships female? Did the first person call their ship a she? No ships that would eventually be turned into anime girls? <laughs> so there actually is an... Uh, that's actually really interesting. It got me thinking. I started looking into it. Because when it, when it comes to... Uh, ships or even like countries you'll call it like your your motherland or like your mother ship or whatever right or like yeah. the ship's maiden voyage and shit like that and shit like that i said ship like that what the fuck 
<laughs> dude, that's really funny. Oh, dude, based. Fucking, the reason is, there's no clear-cut reason. Everyone has their own little interpretation of it, even though everyone kind of does it. Uh, the answer all kind of boils down to, because it is a vessel, much like how a woman is a vessel and carries a child, the ship is carrying you and the rest of the men like on this journey. That's Ooh. like... They all have their own little, like, way of wording it, but it all kind of boils down to just that. Basically because it carries you, and, yeah. Same with, and with, a, with a country, it's because you were given birth there. It's essentially your mother, your mother country. That's why Russia would always say Mother Russia and shit. Oh, God, I wish the USS Indiana gave birth to me. Is that one of the ships? So, I don't know anything about the anime girl ships. Is the Indiana one? It's the only well, ship I know. There Is the Titanic in there? There are two ship girl animes, so she's got to be in at least one. Now, I'm sorry, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, there, there's Kantai Collection, a.k.a. Conkol, the old one, which kind of started this whole bullshit. Now there's Azure Lane, which is the mobile game, which is, like, really popular now, which is, like, a little bullet hell game. I hate so, this. I hate this a lot, so, Alex. So I actually want to tell the this thing. So... The reason all these things turn to anime girls is, yes, because they were all called female in the past, so hundreds of years later we were setting up for this for Japan to market the shit out of them by making them anime girls. Don't worry, Ted. Everything will be an anime girl eventually. Just you wait. Dude, they fucking called it. That's a long con. <laughs> Alright, what's your next question? Alright, it's so my question here. This is from Nana. My question is, how do you demolish a skyscraper? So I was thinking about it, I'm like, oh, that's I admit, I originally dismissed this as like, oh, whatever. It's just a dumb question. And I, and I started thinking for the first time in no my life. I started qu- thinking. I thought it was no stupid questions, Tad. Shut up, Alex. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, you know, how the hell? OK, I mean, Alex, we both know of a pretty efficient way to demolish a skyscraper. But let's not talk about that. Oh, you know, that day, you know, September 11th where nothing happened. Yeah, yeah. Most efficient, well, the most efficient way to take down a skyscraper is a Boeing 767. But there's a few other ways that people take them down. Um, there's the really lame method, which is to manually dismantle the buildings from top to bottom. Really lame method, he calls it. And this is, a, and, you know, we're talking about skyscrapers that would be like downtown Chicago or the singular skyscraper in Boise. You can't just knock that shit over because you're going to take out the whole block. So the problem with dismantling it from the top to the bottom is that you're ripping shit apart and it's no longer up to code. Like you're making the building un, uh, well, what unsafe. There's a fancy word for it, but basically you're making it unsafe. You make every second that you're up there when you're taking shit off increases the chance for like a fire or structural integrity to get compromised, then everyone dies. So it's not cool. Uh, they'll either do that by taking it apart by hand, or they have this giant, like, claw that just kind of picks shit up from the top and then brings it back down and, like, sets it down. Uh, there's this really cool uh, Japanese method I saw, which, um, and this only works for some, but they go into the basement, and uh, they look at the plans of the skyscraper, and they find the supports that are supporting the whole building. And they put these hydraulics underneath it. And what they will do is they will then put the support, like, at the bottom of the support, they raise, it's like, uh, have you ever changed your, you know, you you don't have a car, but uh, do you know how people change car tires? With, with like, a car jack, they lift it up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you jack the car up, and then once you have all, once, so if you got four jacks on there, because you're changing all four tires or something, how do you get the car down? You can't just, like, drop them, right? But they mm-hmm. put all these under there, under these supports, and then they slowly, they get them under, they slowly let it down. The demolishing crew will take out the ground floor. It'll put them down a bit more. Take out the ground floor. Put them down a bit more. Take out the ground floor. And they just kind of keep doing that to slowly take them out. It's uh, it's very slow, but it doesn't cause a huge fucking mess. Like when we do it in the U.S., if they set up charges uh, on the support structures of the building and just blow it up with a specific order. That's the one that usually people do, where it'll all fall in on itself, but shoots dust fucking everywhere. Yeah. It's not too bad, but then they gotta clean it all up. But uh, that's how they'll do it, uh, skyscrapers, is they'll just fucking, uh, hopefully not 
murder multiple people by taking out other buildings. See, I did see fucked up and botched uh, skyscraper demolitions in, like, India. It's not good. Uh. Um, There was a concern, though, that a bunch of people, they just don't fucking know how to take out the super skyscrapers. Like, um, there's that tower, I think it's in, like, Delhi, like, New Delhi or something. It's, like, 1,600 feet tall, and they don't know how they're going to eventually demolish it. So a lot of what people are doing now, because the only time you really need to to get rid of a skyscraper is because it's old and dangerous or the land that it's on is like more expensive than the skyscraper's worth. And you just want to get that fucking land back. Yeah. So usually what people do instead of, you know, instead of destroying a skyscraper, they'll usually just add shit around it or they'll, they'll try and compromise. Destroying it's usually a last ditch thing. But um and then this also ties into another really quick question from Unseen Barbecue. If a skyscraper is a tall building, would a tall igloo be an ice scraper? It's really funny. I, I thought it was funny. It made me laugh at work, you fucker. I'm smiling, but fuck you. All right, Alex. All give, right. Me your, give me your last whiz banger there. Oh, the last one? Yeah, because that, that, that was pretty much all my questions. I have like one or two small ones. So I actually have two more. One that's really short, though, so basically it's like one. Yeah. So, Infinity Synth asks, do fish get thirsty? Now... Damn. At- <laughs> Dude. All right. So, I thought this was fucking stupid as shit, and you're a stupid idiot. However, got me thinking. Do they even, like, process that? Do they even think about getting thirsty? Can they, like, like know that they're, like, they're in water, right? Do they, they know? They, they're conscious of this. And Ted, you know what I found out? What? No, they don't get thirsty, you fucking idiot. They live in water. So I'm asking <laughs> stupid fucking questions. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's kind of like humans can get, like, air hungry, right? You mean we start suffocating? Yeah, yeah, air hungry. They would be suffocating, Ted. If they're out of water, they can't breathe. So they're not thirsty. They're suffocating. Oh, it's thirsty. You will see the fish going. Rrr, rrr, and it's just flopping around trying not to die. All right. <laughs> it's thirsty. As I throw my fucking beer at it. <laughs> the whole bottle. I don't pour it. I just whip a bottle at it. Fucking. Okay. <laughs> it's thirsty. So, so this guy from Doge Village. Hmm. Or is it Doge Village? I'm assuming it's Doge Village. So Doge Village asks. Ahem. If you get jacked into the Matrix, can you get jacked off in it? The answer is yes. I but... was going to choose this question next week. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm bringing it up now because I actually have a segue question right into that. Mm-hmm. Because the Matrix makes me think. A friend of mine was talking about this with a VR chat. And uh, I showed him this picture of, uh, what's his fucking name? Uh, uh, Zuckerberg, the Facebook guy, you know, the robot, the, the guy, the lizard in human skin, where he's like walking down this like crowd of people and the, all the people have like fucking VR things. It was like this big presentation with VR. And it, it's used by like conspiracy and doomsday people being like, oh shit, this is going to be the future where like the wealthy elite live in the real world and we're all stuffed in the fucking like shitty matrix and shit. We're all stuck in the singularity. But I was thinking, you know what? Hypothetically speaking, if we were all uploaded to the Singularity, like we were all just in the Oasis, like in fucking uh, Player One, right? If we're all stuck in VR chat slash real, what? What would be your avatar? You can only pick one thing. Otherwise, it'd be too easy. What would be the thing that for the next however long the Oasis is up for, what would be your guy? For me, it was really hard, but I thought of it. I was originally going to say Xavier, but I changed it. Something that really represents who Pickle I am. Pickle Rick. That, no, that shitty, low-poly, like, old, like, uh, PC game model of Squidward. That would be me <laughs> for the rest of time. I know what I would be. Uh, I would be me, but I just have a huge fucking penis. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you're walking around no you'll be like the dogda from fucking Celtic mythology you have a, such a huge wiener it drags across the ground and makes fucking tunnels and caves i'm sorry what okay so here's a little fun fact if you didn't know Celtic mythology is really horny because remember they didn't have christianity they didn't know it was you know 
embarrassing to be really horny all of the time. They didn't know you weren't so supposed to be the- spinning your dick around like a helicopter. So, like, Dog, this whole thing was he was this big, happy dude with a huge beard, not the SMT one where he's an edgelord, had a big cauldron that can make any food, and also he had a huge dick. He mm-hmm. just had a really big penis that would jack across the ground. Okay, well, just like he, me. Just like me. Here's a little fun fact. No, Kahulan's whole story about how he goes around fighting chicks and fucking chicks and stuff? Yeah, he fucked his trainer and her daughter when he was six years old. What? Yeah, I'm thinking he's a Chad. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. Yeah, the, so Celtic mythology is really horny. There's a little fun fact for you today. Anyway, those are pretty much all of my stupid questions, so I'm tapped out for this week. Yeah, there's, um, I have, how many, how many pages here? Hold on a second. Hold eh. well, on, this is good audio content. One, two, three, four, five, shit, I dropped one. Um, I have like seven. I have like seven pages of um of questions on here that i really like um i try to use try to do kind of a theme with mine where i was choosing like more industrial ones um but i def we definitely have a lot more questions to cover that i think would be really really fun um i want to do one last one here and that'll close out this episode so alex this question is from lixim the great is water wet the great debate. Yes. 2017 Twitter argument. Back at it again. Is water wet? Tad, are you a wet fag or a moist fag? Wait, I can't say the word fag. Damn it. <laughs> um, Fuck! So, here's, so, okay. If something is wet, that means it is covered or saturated in water, right? Well, I guess okay. I should ask this, Alex. Is water wet? There's a correct and a wrong answer to this, so answer right now without being able to think about it so I can make fun of you later. Okay, well, obviously the answer has to be wet because, before you say anything, because, because, it is all, it literally itself is water. It is all, like, I can't say it without comparing it more to water. It is all (laughs) liquid. It is all encompassed because it is literally the item itself. It can't be any more covered in water than it already is. The only thing that can be something like moist or damp is something within the air or something like a plant, or like dew or something. But if we're talking like water, like I'm picturing like like a big like cup of water, right? Like a mm-hmm. big ass fucking like a, like a super sip. You get at a fucking like dollar store, like that, like in there, all that water in there is wet due to the sheer amount of it. Stuff like moist and damp are all about the, the content amount. What about the water that's on the edges touching the plastic cup? Are those wet? What about the water that's on the very very top, where it's only touching water that- on the bottom? The condensation, sation, sation, is what I would call moist, because there's only a little bit of water. <laughs> what I would call around around moist. Us. Yes. I guess um, and then it, the, this, uh, I, was, I wasn't sure about uh, which one it would be myself until I started thinking about, okay, is dust, so if something is dusty, does that mean that dust by itself is dusty? Because to say that something is dusty means that it is covered in dust, right? So dust, just like water, is saturated fully with itself. It's not anything else. You can't have wet dust, you know? So I think I agree with you, Alex. You water, can. Shut up. Uh, it's not, you're not uh, adding to my point, so I'm going to ignore your opinion. <laughs> Fuck you. So I believe that water by itself is wet. Solved the Twitter argument for two years ago on that fucking cultural zeitgeist. No stupid questions. We're on it. We're in the zone. We're new. We're hip. We're hip. Please give us a uh, <laughs> fuck. What's the thing on Twitter? Um, give me oh, give me interactions, please. I need likes, comments and subscribes. All right. So speaking of like comments and subscribes, I have two things to close this episode out with. One, YouTube's really stupid now. And I'm going to say it, Ted. I'm going to say like the biggest shill ever, <gasps> but I have to. No, I'm don't say do it. it. Don't do it. Due to YouTube's new algorithm, could you please ring the bell so that we could get more attention and help the channel grow? No! I said it! And one last final thing. So I was saving this for the uh, for SJW2, The Wrath of Alex, but this is way more fun. I'm getting distracted, much like an ADD kid. So I'm just going to put that, that, that name drop I was going to, I promised that person, just like here. Hmm. So I, I keep forgetting to do it. So I'm just going to do that now at the end of the episode so she could fucking, like, she could die waiting for it. So... When the whole world was coming down, when all... Uh, Chubb, you got to listen to this, all right? When all of hentai was at risk, hmm. 
<laughs> was about to die on the internet. One person had my back, and her name was Stardrop. She had me when no one else, when everyone else was laughing and calling me stupid and, you know, making fun of me. She had my back. So there's your name drop for you. I promised, <laughs> I promised I would name drop Stardrop in an episode because she gave me hentai back when AX Hentai was about to shut down. And then it didn't shut down because a gay couple in, like, Moscow or whatever donated $1 million to move the servers to Moldova. What is so Moldova? So whatever you guys are... Some shitty literal who country that no one heard about. So obviously hentai is legal there. God. So whatever you guys are, whatever you guys are on the X hentai, fap into your sick fucking shit. Just remember, it was a gay couple that saved all hentai everywhere. Oh my god! It can so, <laughs> every single episode of this. I feel like I'm gonna have to cancel at the end because Alex goes out of his way to ruin it. So we'll oh, see so how we it can continues. Have, we can have TNA talking about hentai, but when I put it at the very end of the episode for a for a fun little story, a fun little personal story, and name drop a fan, a fan who is dedicated to this podcast, who loves us dearly, and you're going to say that it's not worth talking about? Wow, Dad, sounds like somebody's a bigot. I bet you don't like Moldova very much either, do you? <laughs> I'm over Moldova. You know what I'm not over? This podcast. Uh, like I said at the very, very start, you can submit your own stupid questions. The small, insignificant, weird questions that you have in the day. Like, uh, just last night at, like, 2 a.m., I, uh, sent Alex a question that I wanted to have, but I read it today, and I just put, like, bed, tear, wet, why? So that didn't really help me remember what the question was, but those are the type of questions that I want. Incomprehensible, weird, small questions that you thought of that you don't know the answer to, and no one cares enough to give you that answer. Send and me those. For me, and for me, because I don't have access to the email, I just read the YouTube comment section and take whichever ones make me like laugh a lot. There are a couple ones that make me think, like the ship one, but as you can see, I had four questions, three of which were dumb, funny ones, so you can tell which ones I like. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, this one is pretty fun, and uh, hopefully we won't miss next week. Because that would suck really hard. So, uh, thanks for listening. And there, there was a tagline I did last episode, but I don't really remember it. There are no stupid questions, except for the one that Aaron sent. Boom. <laughs>